In the development of this project, I was helped by PCBWay, which is one of the most experienced PCB manufacturing company in China in field of PCB prototype and fabrication. If you want to make your own PCB for this project or for any other electronic project, PCBWay is a great choice. They have a large online community when, where you can find the open source project and you can also share your project there. From my personal experience, I can tell you that on this community you can find many useful projects with already designed PCBs from uh, where you can place an order directly. Also, you can get 10 PCBs for only $5. So if you want your PCB, just type pcbway.com on your browser. Hello. An audiometer is a machine used for evaluating hearing acuity. Uh, they usually consist of an embedded hardware, hardware until connected to a pair of headphones uh, and test subject feedback button. This device typically transmits pure tones to the headphones uh, of the test subject and varying frequencies and intensities and record the subject's response to produce an audiogram of tersal sensitivity. I recently took a hearing test in a professional facility and I received the results in the form of an audiogram. I decided to try to make similar device because the principle of operation of the device is quite simple. Uh, after a short research on the internet, I found applications that use the sound card of the PC for this purpose but my goal is to make a pra practical stand-alone device. I found idea for this type of device on the Arduino forums uh, by one user named uh, CSTREM and decided to make it with some modifications depended on the hardware I had at the time. In this case, uh, the Arduino is, is as an input-output unit that gener generates tones with different frequencies and intensity and then displays the feedback results received from the person being tested on a screen with a resolution 8x8 pixels made, of, made up of 64 RGB LEDs. Uh, the screen at the end displays two graphs in different colors for the left and right ear. The device is relatively simple to build and consists of several components. 8x8 matrix consists of 64 RGB LEDs with built-in WS2812 chip. And for a more interesting visual impression, I made a also free 3D printed grid. Uh, next, Arduino Nano microcontroller. Uh, 128 on 64 OLED display with SSD 1306 chip, uh, rotary encoder with push button, female earphone jack, start button, and small earphones. The device is powered by two lithium batteries connected in series and 7805 5-volt voltage stabilizer is placed at its output. This time uh, I neglected the battery control and charging circuit because that part has been described several times before. Now let's see how the device works in reality. Uh, when turning on the device, the first test frequency and the volume in decibels appear on the OLED screen. On the matrix screen, the rows uh, represent the sound volume in decibels and the col columns represent uh, the given frequency in hertz. Now we put the earphone in one ear and using the rotary encoder we gradually increase the volume until we hear a sound. At that moment, we press the button, which remembers the result for the first frequency and switches to the next, next frequency. And thus we go to the end. This glitch is occurred due to the poor quality of the rotary encoder. Another glitch.
uh, uh, when we finish with the last frequency we switch the earphone to the other ear and repeat the procedure for all frequencies now the diode will light up with a different color At the end, the device plots the audiograms for both ears uh, individually in red and blue. The display will give us all the information required. This is final graph. This will tell you the quality of your hearing at each frequency. The red color rep represents the left ear and while the blue color represents the right one. Let me mention that this is not a this is not a professional device and can be used for fun. However, if we calibrate it using a professional device as I did, we can get a quite solid insight into the auditory capab capabilities of our hearing organs. Uh, finally, the device is installed in a situable case made, made of PVC board and covered by colored wallpaper. Below is a short video description of the method of making the device. A few days after I finished the project, I had access to the bone conduction handset, which is used for bone conduction testing. This is another type of pure tone test that measures your inner ear's response to sound. A conductor will be placed behind your ear. It will send tiny vibrations through the bone direct, directly to the inner ear. This is different than the traditional version, which uses air to send audible signals. If the results of this test are different than the pure tone audiometry, your audiologist can use this information to determine your type of hearing loss. Uh, determining the threshold should be done in the same way as obtaining the air conduction threshold is performed. Bone conduction measurements are normally restricted to the frequency range from 250 to 4000 Hz. With a small modification of, of the previously described device, I expanded its functionality and after that, uh, bone conduction testing can also be performed with it. It is only necessary to add a small audio amplifier because the ohmic resistance of the test headset vibrator is only 4 ohms. I used a small, inexpensive D-Class amplifier with a potentiometer which is a quite suitable for this purpose. It is only necessary to bring the signal from headphones 
to input uh, of the amplifier. A bone conduction headset uh, is connected to the output of the amplifier through the situable connector. With the help of the potentiometer, uh, we can perform a precise calibration using a commercial device like this. So, as I mentioned before, the method of performing the test is exactly the same as in the previous case, only that instead of a headset, a bone conduction oscillator is placed on the bone behind the ear. <laughs>